In this video, we will show you how to assemble the machine body of Snapmaker Artisan. If you purchase the enclosure along with the laser and CNC add-ons, you're recommended to assemble the machine body first, then the enclosure, and lastly the functional parts for higher efficiency. This video will show you the assembly of only the machine body. For guides on setting up the enclosure and the three functions, you can watch our other video tutorials. This video will cover four steps, including unbox, install Y-axis, install Z-axis, and install X-axis and support platform. If you purchase the 3-in-1 model of Artisan 3D Printer, you will receive two packages. The one labeled Artisan 3D Printer includes machine body and 3D printing parts, while the other with additional standard 3-in-1 add-ons contains laser, CNC, and enclosure units. So, you can find all you need in the Artisan 3D Printer box to assemble the machine body. If you're going to use the enclosure, you need to prepare a space of at least 1.7 meters long, 1.1 meters wide, and 0.8 meters high for assembly and use. But if you don't use the enclosure, the space you need will be 1 meter by 0.7 meters by 0.8 meters. Also, make sure the load capacity of the plane where you assemble your machine is greater than 65 kilograms. Since some parts are weighty, you're suggested to assemble or move your machine with a helper. In addition, if you want to exhaust gas with the enclosure, make sure the place is convenient for that as well. When you're ready, open up the box and take out the following parts and tools. Five linear modules, toolbox with the blue H3.0 hex key included, support platform, two Z-axis holders, two X-axis connectors, tool head bracket, tool head cable, three cable clips, M5 times 12 screws, M5 times 16 low head cap screws, M5 times 16 flat head screws, and base plate. First of all, find the two linear modules labeled with Y on the cable connector. They will be the Y axes. Be careful not to press the steel strip when holding the linear modules. Turn the box over and lay it down. Now put the Y axis into the slots on the back of the foam box. Thread the Y axis cables through the cable holes of the base plate and put the base plate over the Y axis. Make sure the dowels of the base plate are fully inserted into the dowel holes of the Y axis. Then attach the Y axis to the base plate using 24 M5 times 12 screws. To install the screws, Firstly, pre-tighten the screws at the outermost corners with the long handle of the hex key. Secondly, pre-tighten the remaining screws. And lastly, tighten all the screws in the pre-tightening order with the key's short handle. This method applies to all cases that involve installation of multiple screws. Finally, flip the base plate to the front side and try to move the Y axes to check if they have been firmly attached to the base plate. Find the two linear modules labeled with Z on the cable connector. They will be the Z axes. Take one of the Z axes, insert the dowels of the X axis connector into the dowel holes of the Z axis slider, and lock the connector and slider together using four M5 times 12 screws. Next, thread the Z axis cables through the cable holes, and insert the dowels of the Z axis holder into the dowel holes of the Z axis. Then, Attach the Z-axis to the Z-axis holder with 4 M5 times 12 screws. Lift the Z-axis. Insert the dowels of the base plate into the dowel holes of the Z-axis holder. And attach the Z-axis holder to the base plate with 4 M5 times 12 screws. When finished, repeat the steps above to install the other Z-axis. Before you attach the X-axis, Move both Z-axis sliders downward to their farthest ends, so as to align them horizontally. When you assemble the X-axis or use the machine, remember not to put anything in the openings of the base plate. Otherwise, it may interfere with the movement of the linear modules and the work platforms. Take the last linear module labeled with X on the cable connector. It will be the X-axis. In the direction shown on the X-axis, insert the dowels of the X-axis connectors into the dowel holes of the X-axis. 
and fasten the x-axis with one M5 times 12 screw and seven M5 times 16 low head cap screws. The only N5 times 12 screw is used in the hole highlighted, which is at the bottom left corner from the rear. After that, attach two cable clips to the Z axes with two M5 times 12 screws, as shown. Notice the positions and directions of the clips. Press the marked positions of the X axis cable into the cable clip of the Z axis right behind. Then find the cable labeled with tool head on the cable connector and fix it to the other Z-axis by clipping the position with two yellow lines. Similarly, attach the last cable clip to the middle of X-axis and fix the tool head cable where there is only one yellow line. Next, attach the tool head bracket to the X-axis slider with 4 M5 times 16 flathead screws. Next, you'll need the support platform, which is pre-installed underneath the 3D printing platform. You need to separate them first. Make sure the Y-axis sliders are at the front of the axes and attach the support platform to the Y-axis sliders with 8 M5 times 16 low head cap screws. Likewise, you're recommended to pre-tighten the four outermost screws, then pre-tighten the remaining screws. Lastly, pull the support platform forward and meanwhile, tighten all the screws. Finally, put your hands beneath both ends of the X-axis and lift the x-axis over the z-axis holders so that you can install the tool head and the work platform later. That's all for this video. If you'd like to know how to set up the 3D printing, laser, and CNC functions or assemble the enclosure, we have other videos for your reference. Thank you for watching.